Good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you to Emmett and thank you to the organisers for this opportunity to uh, speak to you today about OPT302. This is a trap molecule that we are developing at Opthea. We are a public company listed on the Australian Stock Exchange, and we are developing the molecule for the treatment of neovascular AMD and DME. So as you know, the VEGF-VEGF receptor pathway is broadly recognised as the key signalling pathway driving angiogenesis, as well as vascular permeability. And the existing therapies for the treatment of neovascular AMD and DME, uh, they share a common mechanism of action by targeting VEGF-A and preventing its interaction predominantly with VEGF receptor 2. Both ranibizumab and bevacizumab selectively block VEGF-A, whereas aflibercept blocks VEGF-A as well as VEGF-B and uh, placental growth factor. OPT302, the trap molecule that we're developing at Opthea Limited, is a potent and selective inhibitor of the two alternative members of this family which are not targeted by the existing therapies for AMD and diabetic macular edema. OPT302 potently blocks VEGF-C and D's interaction with both VEGF receptor 2 and VEGF receptor 3, therefore conferring on the molecule anti-angiogenic and anti-vascular permeability properties. Used in combination with a VEGF-A inhibitor, we can achieve a more complete blockade of the VEGF, VEGF receptor signalling pathway, and this may be an important mechanism for targeting clinical sub-responsiveness to selective VEGF-A inhibitors. We know that when we block VEGF-A through selective inhibitors such as Bevacizumab, Placentis or Ilea, that compensatory upregulation in VEGF-C and D can occur, and this can continue to drive signalling through VEGF receptor 2 and VEGF receptor 3, contributing to clinical sub-responsiveness despite ongoing therapy with a VEGF-A inhibitor. This is shown clearly here with a significant upregulation in VEGF-C levels following only two months of vervacizumab treatment by intravitreal injection in neovascular AMD patients. Our preclinical work has identified that OPT302 has an overlapping ocular biodistribution pattern to aflibercept, as you can see here, very good retinal uh, uh, residence time in the eye when it's injected intravitreally, uh, also in the vitreous humour. And our phase 1 to A clinical trial has indicated that there is very low systemic exposure of OPT302 following intravitreal injection with no accumulation of the drug when it's administered on an every four-week dosing cycle and no influence by ranibizumab on the uh, pharmacokinetic profile either. Our clinical program to date has included a phase 1 to A clinical trial of 51 patients in AMD patients. This is a study that's been previously uh, reported and is only covered briefly in today's presentation. But I want to highlight the two ongoing studies that the company has right now. We have an ongoing phase 2B clinical trial. This is a randomised controlled clinical study of OPT302 in combination with ranibizumab compared to ranibizumab alone. This is a phase 2B clinical trial that we anticipate reporting out in the following weeks, certainly in the third quarter of 2019. The second of our two ongoing clinical trials is a diabetic macular edema study in combination this time with a flibercept. We're currently recruiting into the phase 2A cohorts and this is anticipated for reporting out early in 2020. To recap our uh, results that we've already presented on the phase 1 to A clinical trial, this is the design of that clinical study. OPT302 was administered as a monotherapy in this first in human trial, but also in combination with ranibizumab. Each patient was dosed on a monthly basis for three months with the primary readout at week 12. The majority of patients recruited into this clinical trial were prior treated with the mean number of prior injections in the patients of 17, so heavily pre-treated patients with 49% of the patients actually treatment naive. I'm pleased to say that we've now injected over 400 patients at the top dose of OPT302 of 2 milligrams in combination with ranibizumab and consistently demonstrated a safe and well-tolerated safety profile. We also demonstrated activity uh, of OPT302 when it's administered as a monotherapy. At week 12 in patients administered OPT302 uh, monotherapy, a 5.6 letter game at week 12 compared to baseline was observed. In, and these are patients that did not receive any lacentis rescue therapy. In those patients that did receive rescue therapy, those patients continue to perform poorly and not as good as the OPT302 uh, monotherapy treated patients, as you can see there. In treatment-naive patients uh, administered the combination treatment, 10.8 letter gain in visual acuity was observed at week 12 compared to baseline, and in prior treated, heavily pre-treated patients, a 4.9 letter gain at week 12 compared to baseline was observed with robust reductions in central subfield thickness also observed in both patient groups. We did see also reductions in CNV size on FA in the treatment-naive patients treated with the combination, as you can see here, and by week 12, 50% of patients had absent CNV on FA, and this is data that was read out by an independent reading centre. 
The current clinical study that is ongoing right now is a phase 2B clinical trial. It's a multi-centre international randomised controlled clinical trial, double mast, investigating OPT302 at two doses in combination with Lacentis compared to Lacentis on its own. All patients are treatment naive and are dosed on a, uh, every four-week cycle for six months with the primary readout, the mean change in visual acuity at week 24 compared to baseline. Our clinical trial in DME is in combination with a flibercept, as you can see here. OPT302 plus a flibercept versus a flibercept on its own. And importantly, in this clinical study, we are recruiting prior treated patients that have had uh, previous anti vegfa therapy but have had exhibited a uh, suboptimal therapeutic response. We've already demonstrated a cl uh, clean safety profile in combination with a flibercept and a dose response uh, so responsive um, increases in visual acuity in the phase 1b dose escalation in DME patients as well, and some exciting results in patients with bilateral disease in the DME patient population. We do anticipate reading out data from the phase 2b clinical trial in wet AMD um, in just a few short weeks and look out for the top line data in the phase 2a DME trial early in 2020. Thank you very much.